guys can you guys hear me okay yeah. all right um, so this is I made that video uh, myself and I remixed some music myself and the reason I did that is I want you guys to feel me before I even get on stage and when I became a coach from a pro cyclist like what I wanted to do was give people feelings I wanted to give people emotion I wanted people to understand the path that I've taken to get to where I am, and I want, wanted them to feel who I am, and my personality, and, and the sport, all different things, right? So when I created this video, I thought, OK, most of these people aren't going to understand cycling. They probably don't even know me. Maybe they'll Google me on the internet. They'll see some stuff they don't like. They'll see some cool stuff. I don't know what they'll think. But I wanted you guys to see and feel who I truly am. And I'm an emotional, passionate, driven, hardworking individual that had some success along the way but I also had a lot of hardship. And today, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about transforming from the hardships, turn that stuff into success. How many of you guys have failed before in the past? That's a lot, right? <laughs> Has anyone in this room ever failed and not become better from that? Exactly, right? Failing is part of becoming better. Failing is part of becoming to the next level. Failing is part of becoming great. I had a lot of failure in my past. I had a lot of struggle. And in fact, every time that I fell down, I always got up stronger. I always got up strong, better. I always got up faster, more driven, more focused. I always got up better, right? That is what being a professional athlete is all about, is about failing and becoming stronger from it. But I also had a lot of trouble during my career with fear of failure. I was afraid to fail, which is crazy. So 
I would go and train and I would work my muscles super hard, I'd work my mind super hard, and I'd push myself to the next level, essentially failing day in and day out to get better. And I was okay with that. But then when I would go out in public and when it was time to do this stuff like we just watched, I would get nervous, I would hold back. I didn't, I didn't give it my all because I was afraid of failing. It sounds crazy, right? But a lot of us, and a lot of you guys, we know that failure is what we need to get to the next level, but we're absolutely terrified to look it in the face, right? So the next thing for you guys to beat that, to get to the next level, is to think about transformation, is to think about who you can be, to think about who you're going to be, to think about where you can go. And today I'm going to basically build my whole talk around that transformation, about using failure to our advantage, about using having to change to our advantage. Most of us hate change. Most of us go the opposite direction from change because we don't want to deal with it. But change is actually what makes us better. Change is actually what takes us to the next level. Transforming is really the next best version of us. So I'm going to start off with the what, why, and how of transformation. What is transformation? Transformation uh, basically is reinventing yourself, right? You've hit a block, you've hit some barrier, you've come across a better competitor, you've come across a harder challenge than you expected, and you've had to reinvent yourself to get to that next level. Why do you need to transform? because it's your only option to move forward, right? So many of us are afraid of this option, but it's the only one. You only have one option. A lot of us, we kid ourselves to think we have other options. It's either get better or die or go backwards or become extinct. And as a professional athlete, I was faced with that all the time. I got sick, I got injured, people got better than me. That's the ultimate one, right? People got better than me. I had to transform. I had to change. I had to get better. Or they beat me. But a lot of us, we don't even want to look at that. We want to make excuses. We wanted to, and I was one of them, right? I'd say, hey, that guy did this. Or that, that person was lucky. Or the worst, I had a bad day. I wasn't myself. I didn't give it everything. The why in transformation is because you have to. There is no other option. And the how, well, that's the tricky one, right? And I've messed up so many times, and I've fallen down so many times, and I'm about to share with you guys my ultimate failure. But I, because of that, I've built a process to help my clients, my athletes, the people I work with, transform on a daily basis. Because as a coach, for me, it's not good enough for them just to get faster or to get stronger. I want them to become better. I want them to become more powerful human beings, not just more powerful on the bike. So I built this three-step process. Step one, situational awareness. Understand the situation that you're in. Step two, understand your vision. So for me, there's three parts to vision. Purpose, perspective, desired outcome, and step Three, action. Take action. Okay, so I'm going to tell you guys a really horrible, gory story that I experienced. And I made the decision to tell this story actually like this morning because I had this whole other talk planned. And I, you know, I, there's this elephant in the room and I didn't want to talk about it. And I was like, all right, I got to come up with a, this beautiful story about overcoming failure and how, you know, I won that stage in the, the USA Pro Cycling Challenge after a crash in the Tour de France. That's the story I wanted to tell you guys. How I, how I transformed from injured athlete to stage winner in one of the biggest races in the world here in Colorado. But I'm not gonna tell you that story. My wife and I made the decision to tell you guys like the absolute most disgusting, gory, horrible uh, story in my life. So I'm gonna get emotional up here, but, I, but if I don't do anything today, I want you guys to, have a, to feel me. I want you guys to feel the impact. I want you guys to feel the same kind of things that you felt from the video, emotion. I want you guys to feel the things that I went through, and most of all, that I had no op option. I had to transform, and I became better from it. Okay? So guys, 
I was a professional cyclist, and now I'm a coach. And I like to think that I'm one of the best cycling coaches in the world. I'm not sure if I'm not, if I am or not, but I think I'm pretty good. How did I get from pro cyclist to good coach? Does anyone have a guess? Transform for sure, yes. But I had some major shit happen in my life. In 2015, I was at the pinnacle of my career. I'm a little bit older, but I've learned a lot of stuff and I became better and better and better throughout my career. 2015, I was returning to the race that I'd won two times already, Tour of Utah. There was a bunch of clips in, the, in, that, uh, in that video. It was my favorite race, big race in America, had a lot of high altitude climbs, and I was in the best shape of my life. I had trained my ass off, I got my head together, I was ready to win. I spent every single day for 2015 and 2014 getting ready for this race. I was going to crush this race. When I got to the race, of course I was the race favorite. I did all the press conferences. I, got, I was in all the media. The night before my race, I got a phone call. The night before, I'm at dinner with my team. I had just finished all the press conferences, all the media telling everybody, I'm the best I've ever been. I'm gonna destroy this race. I'm here to win. I'm gonna crush it. In fact, everyone knew it, right? Just looking at me, they knew I was the guy. I was going to become the first ever three-time champion of Tour of Utah. I got this call at dinner with my team. I didn't recognize the number. I picked up my phone at dinner. On the other, on the other side was USADA, which is the US Anti-Doping Association. And I have a relationship with USADA because I helped out with the, the Lance Armstrong investigation. I was part of all that, right? Like I, I came forward, I talked about my past. I knew those guys really well um, from working with them to, to hopefully clean up the sport by admitting and, and telling my wrongdoings in the past. So I answered the phone and I thought, okay, I don't really want to talk to these guys right now. Like, I thought they were asking me for more help with this, with this Johan Bernil thing that was going on, who, who was another director in, in the sport. And I answered the phone and I said, guys, like, I'm getting ready to, 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 to focus on this race. Like, can, we, can we do this, this testimony or whatever about, about the, the U.S. Postal thing another time? And they said, well, actually, Tom, it's about you. I thought, what do you mean about me? I said, you tested positive. And at that moment, my heart dropped, right? Like, I didn't even know what to think. My teammates were all with me at dinner. Like, I, was, I felt like I was in the, the moment of my career that I was ready to break through. And now someone on the phone is telling me, like, your career's over. Like, you just, you just tested positive. And I thought, no, this is a mistake. I'm sorry, like, wrong number. I definitely didn't do this. Like, and he said, no, Tom, you know, you tested positive. What do you want to do next? Well, what I did next is I freaked out. And, you know, I had, I had done that stuff in the past. I had been part of cycling in, in the past when that was part of the behavior. And I left that world. I left that past. I started Slipstream Sports with everybody to, to clean up the sport. I got away from that. I'm terrified of that world. And when you're innocent, when you're in a situation like that where, where you look guilty but you're innocent, you freak out. And I freaked out, right? Like, I, you know, when I was guilty in the past, like you're embarrassed, you're, you wanna hide. But when, you're, when you're, you're told that you did something that you didn't do, like you freak out you, and, and, I, and I panicked. I went immediately online, I went on Twitter and I, 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 told, I spilled my guts. I said, guys, I can't race, I'm out of the race. Like, I tested positive, I don't know the cause of it, I'm gonna find out, I'll see you guys later when I have the answer. I would never do this. I got off Twitter, I packed up the car, I jumped in with, with my wife, and we drove back home. And the whole way back, I cried, and I, and I told her, I said, like, you need to run, you need to get out of here. Like, I don't, like, in the world of cycling, like, doping is the, is the ultimate talk, right? Like, that's, everyone tries to steer clear of it, and, and if you have anything to do with it, you're done. And it, because I admitted my past and because I had talked about this stuff, I looked guilty, this was it, I was done. And I told my wife, I said, you gotta go, you gotta run. Like, there's no way I'm getting out of this. I'm gonna try to find the answer, but you gotta go. Drove all the way back to Colorado in tears, absolutely freaking out. Meanwhile, the enormous storm was happening in Tour Utah. Everyone was saying all this bad stuff about me. People were like, oh, look, like he was trying to win Utah, he took drugs to win. Like it was a perfect storm. When I got back home, I put my head in the dirt like a, 
like a, a ostrich, right? Like I was t absolutely terrified, and I thought this is all just going to go away. I didn't do this; it's going to resolve itself. I put my head in the sand for two weeks, three weeks, nothing happened. The same storm was outside. I didn't know what to do. I thought it was going to go away. And the biggest thing was, is I, I couldn't, my only identity was a professional cyclist. I thought that was my only option. I couldn't see clearly. I couldn't see anything. All I knew was I was innocent. And because this was wrong that was happening to me, it was going to go away. It was, a right was going to be made out of it. Well, guess what, guys? Like, no right came out of that whatsoever, right? The damage was done. I never got my career back. I spent thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars investigating supplements, finding all the causes, finding all the things that would prove my innocence. But the thing that I failed to look at in these moments, in these months after this positive test, was my career was done. Because of my past, because of this situation, and because I was 37 years old, it wasn't an option for me to return back to pro cycling. But I didn't see that in that moment. All I saw was that I was a pro cyclist. I had always done this for my whole life, and this was my only option, right? I was holding on to it. I was spending money I didn't have to prove my innocence because I thought I would come back to the world with my middle fingers in the air, and I'd say, F you guys, I'm innocent. I'm, now I'm going to crush it. Now I'm going to go right back to where I was, doing the same thing I'd always done, racing my bike for a living. I never for a minute thought, oh, I can get a job at Starbucks, or I can go make some money, or do something else, or learn a new trade. I had two college degrees. I graduated with a marketing degree and a psychology degree, and I never thought for a second I could go and work. <laughs> and fuck, fuck, I was terrified at work. <laughs> but now, after like being in the real world, this shit's not any harder than that, right? Like It's way easier to do this work that I was trying to avoid than doing that. But I got to a point where we made a decision. Courtney and I made a decision, and we thought, what happened to me was wrong, but I have to move forward. I have to go in a different direction. Why did I reach this point? Well, we got two kids and a house, and we were running out of money. That's why we made the decision. That was our moment, right, is we realized I had to do something. I had to pivot. I had to go in a different direction. Doing the same thing was not working. It was difficult for me. I was messed up because I only saw myself as a professional cyclist. I still trained six hours a day during this time. I had no job. I had no races. I had no hope. But I had my process, and I stayed to my process, and I rode my bike every single day. And that kept me sane. That kept me in the game. But there came a time where things changed for me. Obviously, we made the decision to move forward. We had to start a business. We had to get a job. What was that going to be? But the thing that changed everything for me was I took ownership in my situation. I was innocent. This positive test was not my fault. This was not my fault. And I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars proving whose fault it was. But did that change anything? No, it didn't change a single thing. All that money was wasted because I wasn't going to get back my career back because of the real situation, because the changing landscape, because I was older, and the, 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 the sport was going in a different direction. I was done. But I took ownership and I said, this is not my fault, but it is my fucking responsibility to move forward. I have two kids who count on me. I have a wife that counts on me. I have to do something now. I have to move forward. So I went back and looked at myself and I thought, what can I do? I have a business degree. I have a psychology degree. I know a little bit about cycling. And I ran out in the public, 
into, into the public that I thought hated me. And I asked people, I said, what should I do, guys? Like, do I get a job at Starbucks? Do I go to a marketing agency? Do I get a job at CenturyLink? I don't know where I go. Like, what do I do? And everybody told me, start a business. Every single person told me to start a business. They said, you have all the tools inside to start a business. You have the direction. You have the skills. You have the ability. You have everything inside of you to move forward, to move in a positive direction, and to create something that will actually impact people's lives. And this was actually the first time I learned about business. Because in the, in the past, I had thought business, having a business and getting paid and work and have a job is basically about earning money. But it turns out business and work is about solving problems to help people, right? That's the whole part, part of this whole game. Well, when I took a look inside and I listened to those people, I was like, oh shit, like I have a ton of tools to actually help people in different areas in their life. In fact, I've had so many problems and so much success that I was a great person to help people figure stuff out to either prevent them from making problems or push them in a direction to overcome problems. What is that person? That person's a coach, right? A coach. And, it, and I had coaches all through my cycling career. And my coaches gave me workouts. They gave me like training plans. They gave me intervals. Now you're telling me I'm going to be a coach and I'm going to give people training plans and intervals? I'm not doing that. I didn't want to do that. So I had to think, how can I make myself different? How can I, because there's a lot of people already doing that. There's a ton of people giving training plans and giving direction and, and, and giving people intervals to make them stronger. I want to impact people's lives. I want to get involved. I want people to feel stuff like that movie. I want them to get inspired. I want them to jump out of bed and crush their life. So I started building in all my own twists to it, right? I take all my things, the ways I fell down, all the, th the, all the different problems that I had, and I started combining them with solutions. And then I started working with people. Turns out people want coaches. I thought this was crazy. I was like, you want me, to, you want to pay me to, to help? And in fact, at first, like when people ask me if they become their coach, I'd be like, you know I'm gonna have to charge you. <laughs> because when I was a pro athlete, you didn't really pay for coaching, right? Like you're famous, you're good. Like I don't pay for shit, right? Like you should give me that. So like when people would start being like, hey, will you coach me? I'd be like, first of all, I don't do coaches. I do transforming. So I'll transform you and I'm gonna have to charge you because because that's like what, 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 what I'm supposed to do, right? Like, I had a hard time with it, honestly. Like, it wasn't me. I was a pro cyclist. I used to go up hills fast and thought I, I solved the world's problems, right? Go up Independence Pass and ripped it in, into pieces. And I thought when I did that, I, you know, I, I helped people overcome cancer. I, I solved, like, poverty, right? Like, I thought when I got to the finish line and I won a race, the whole world was happy. Turns out you can help them in much better ways than that, right? You can actually get on the phone with them and give them the process and help them overcome these problems. So that's what I turned into. I became this sort of transform transformational coach. And I help people with their problems. And I help them through cycling. Because cycling is a lot like life. It's hard. A lot of times it's not fair. Most of the time it's not. And you're just constantly overcoming obstacles and they're usually obstacles that we create ourselves. Sound familiar? Yes. We're our own problem half the time. That's cycling, right? I'm going to go ride three times Mount Evans. Bam, I just created three problems for myself that I then spent all day overcoming. It's life. It's what we do. So I became really good at it. And my focus was like people with jobs because those were the people that didn't have time and they had income and they wanted help and they saw the value of it. So I created a business and it was, it's become a badass business. And it's not like anything else out there. Cinch is the name of my business. It's slang for simple. I simplify Tour de France level stuff. I put it into people's lives and I help them become better at cycling and their life through proven processes that I used as a Tour de France athlete. That's my business. Now, if you were to ask me in 2015, when I had my positive test and my whole career was over, that I was going to make a successful business around doing that, 
I would have been like, pound sand, no way. I'm going to be rich on the beach, like doing like appearances, car, car dealership appearances. Like I'll be driving around a Ferrari. I don't like I was an idiot back then. I had no idea like what my game plan was. In fact, my game plan was to keep racing until something just goes away. Well, it did, but not the way I expected it. So guys, through me losing my career, through something wrong happening to me that wasn't my fault, by me taking ownership, pivoting from this failure, and then using the skills and ability and direction that I had, I built my own unique business that I have today that's greater than anything I ever did in cycling. I'm way more happy. I make more money. And I get to actually influence and change people's lives every single day. It's super badass. This is what transformation is all about. You will never see it coming. You can't anticipate when you need to do it, right? But you have to be ready for it, and you have to have a proven process to be able to change direction and go in a new direction to adapt to today's changing land landscape. It's changing in pro sports. It's changing in your company. It's changing outside with the weather, right? I had to change my whole plan today, planned on going on 287 to get here, and all of a sudden there was all these people crashing all over the place, and then I'm on 95th, and I'm going this way, and I'm going that way. I planned to get here at 930. I got here at 1015. It's changing all the time. We have to adapt. We have to transform. So now I'm going to share with you guys my badass, or what I think is badass, proven process on how to transform, right? Step one, situal, situational awareness. Be aware of what's going on. When I tested positive, when this happened, I didn't have that. All I knew was it was wrong. That test was wrong. I'm not that guy. I didn't do that, and you all should know this. Everyone should know that I'm innocent, and I should get, get back to Tour of Utah and race, because that's what's right. Because I worked too fucking hard to not do and not win Tour of Utah. But is that reality? No. It happened to me. Again, it was not my fault, but it was my responsibility to quickly adapt and figure out that I had to move forward. So guys, the first step, or in situational awareness, figure out what's going on, what's happening. Then own it. Whether it's your fault or it's not your fault, when you own something, you take control. Right now, things seem in control for you guys, right? Like we're in here, you're supposed to be in here from 10.30 to 12. It's in control, but it's really not, right? This, this ceiling could fall down. Right? A meteor could come flying out of here and, and knock this down. This whole company could just disappear in a second. It seems in control, but it's not. The only way you can actually truly take some control is when you make it about you, and you take ownership, and you take responsibility. Right? So the first part of situational awareness, own it. The next part is pivot. Once you have control, you can go in another different direction. If you're floating up here like I was with no direction, it's hard to pivot, right? When you're in the spaceship hovering around, how do you pivot? Which direct, where do you even anchor to move in a different direction? You can't. So anchor that in your ownership and then pivot in a different direction. Any direction, just go somewhere else. Go away from where you just were. And in my case, I had to completely disband. I had to disconnect from being a pro athlete. I had to let that go. Do you know how hard that was? I've been doing this pro shit for, since I was 14. I was winning bike races when I was 14. From 14 to just a few years ago, I never paid for anything. It was all given to me. And any time I got on my bike, people said, wow, you're amazing. And all of a sudden, now I'm in the real world. I'm having to go in a different direction. It was so uncomfortable. I hated every minute of it. But now I look back at it, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. So own it, 
pivot. Now the next step is your vision. So now when you change direction, guess what? You need clarity to know where you're going to go. Clarity is hard to find, right? It's super hard to find. There's so much noise out there. There's so many people saying so many different things. People are pulling in us in every single di different direction. So I think there's three parts to vision, three parts to finding clarity. Part number one, your purpose. Why are you here? Why are you doing this? Do you guys realize that in 15 years of racing in the Tour de France, in the World Tour, no one ever asked me why I'm a professional cyclist? Not one person, not one coach, not one sponsor, definitely not one TV or media, not even any friends. No one asked me my why. Everyone asked me, what are you going to do next? What do you want? How good are you? What did you think of this? But no one asked me why. How many times do you guys ask yourselves why? Why do you do this? Why are, you who, why are you who you are? It's a difficult question. But that's the first part of finding clarity. Ask yourself why. Why are you here? For me, why did I ride my bike? The answer is, well, a big part of my answer of why I ride my bike is I like to share my experiences with other people. I really do. I loved making that video. Because I knew, when I combined it with that music, that I'd be able to experience or share with you guys the, the, the feelings and emotions that I felt in those moments. Like timing the hits and the drops and the beats, right, to my attacks, or the intensity to, to my face, or even my eye opening to the word burning, right? Like to me that was like, man, I'm going to burn my past, my, right? Like, you know, like that, that's how I felt in that moment. That's why I, I ride my bike. And I like to ride it fast. I like to do difficult stuff. So I can then share those experiences with people. Turns out that works really well for being a coach. If you're really interested in sharing those things to other, about, about your sport to other people and sharing how you felt. It's humbling, but for me it's awesome. The second part of finding clarity or vision is perspective. Who are you? Like, what is your world around you? What are your commitments? Who's on your team? What are your responsibilities? No one ever asked me that either. Like, that, like that's huge. And today, like, I'm awesome with my perspective. Like, I train my ass off for one hour a day. Not six hours a day. But my one hour a day on my bike is amazing because I'm a dad and I run a business and I have a wife and I spend all my time with those other things. So I just have one hour. But guys, I am the most badass 40 year old CEO, husband, father in Longmont, Colorado that trains in his basement one hour a day. I'm the fucking best and I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> That's my perspective. Now, if I got on my trainer and I, I compared myself to what I was the year before or my career, I suck, right? Like, I don't train the same. I'm not as fast. I'm not as lean. And what everyone else says, I don't have enough time. That's cool. I own that, right? Like, that's who I am. That's my perspective. And the last part of, of clarity, or finding clarity is desired outcome. What do you want to achieve? This is another crazy one. No one ever asked me that when I was racing. What do you want out of this whole thing? I just told people what they wanted to hear. Well, I want to finish on the podium of the Tour de France, of course. I want to win. But I didn't want to win, and I didn't want to finish on the podium of the Tour de France. I just wanted to go fast, and I wanted to feel in control, to be honest with you. And I wanted to progress every single, every single year. 
I think I would have had a lot more happiness and a lot more clarity in how I responded and reacted to certain changes in my life had I just owned those things, right? If I just owned that outcome that I wanted. I'm winning all the time. But instead, I'm taking other people's outcomes, podium of the Tour de France, which I fell short every single year. So I felt like shit a lot of the times. But the reality is, if I, if I looked at that, if I looked at that desired outcome that I truly wanted, I was going in the right direction most of the time. And any time I fell off the tracks, I would have been able to use that to help me get back on the tracks. Look at what I did with what happened to me with my positive test. All that stuff broke me down until that was all that was left for me. I was distilled until just that. That's all I had was my purpose, my perspective, and my outcome. That was all that I was left for me. I didn't have anything else. I didn't have any of those other people. And that's how I found the right direction to go in, how I found that clarity when I made that pivot. The final part of transformation is the action. Sounds exciting, right? This is the thing that most people don't do. We would rather watch it on the movies and watch other people do it than ourselves do it. And the reason for that is because it's fucking scary. It's horrible. But the action is the reward. The action is the process. The action is what, that is what makes it all worth it in the end. Every time I see my company logo, every time I, I, I talk to someone and I represent my company, I'm proud. Because of the action, because of the battles that I took to make it happen, to make that transformation happen. Action is so important. And there's three ingredients in your action. Ability, skill, and direction. You have to have those three things, and those three things have to be in line with the outcome that you're chasing, that you're trying to get. Sounds simple when I say it like that, right? So when I made the transformation, or started to make the transformation from pro cyclist to entrepreneur, I had certain skills and I had certain ability from my past career. And boy, did I use those. I was good at taking risks. I did not care about crashing. I never did. I was willing to die for my sport. It's the truth. I really was. I was that fucked up. But I used that, that, that same, that same skill set in my business. I was not afraid of making mistakes. I was not afraid of falling down. I was used to it. So I used that, right? I made lots of mistakes. I failed quickly. I failed fast. But I always failed forward the same way that I did when I was a pro athlete. So I used those to get my business where it was at. My ability. I was freaking, I had super hard working, and I had a ton of endurance. Remember I said I was afraid of the four letter word work before? Turns out as a pro athlete, you do a lot of work. Holy shit, you're working all the time. All the time was I pushing myself. But my body would give out. Well, guess what? Now I'm using my brain. The brain muscle, this shit is for real. <laughs> Holy cow, it doesn't stop. It doesn't cramp. It doesn't fail. It just keeps going and going and going and going. It's amazing. So I took that endurance and that drive and that ability to outlast, and I threw it into creating a business. And I just went, and I still do. And I love it. I fulfill even a big part of myself in that part component of building a business. I love it. Now, direction was something that I didn't have. So when we looked and see, OK, I, I've got some ability and some skill. I know a lot about cycling. I know how to teach it. I have the endurance to build a business. I have the toughness to, to deal with failure. I, I'm not afraid of it. But I was missing the direction. How do you do it? I'd never done it. I'd always wanted to do it, but I never had. So I had to go out and find it. I had to go find direction. 
So guys, in that action, your first part of that is to look at those three things, your ability, skill, and direction, and say, OK, like, does this ma is this all I need to get to where my transformation needs to be? And most of the time, it's not. You have bits and pieces where you can kind of throw things together, but you're going to have to get help. You're going to find, have to find a mentor. You're going to have to find strategies. You're going to have to find proven processes that other people have done and use those and put them into yours. So that's what I did. I watched YouTube like never before. Before I used to use YouTube basically to kill time because I was recovering. Right? I'd be sitting on the couch with my, with my compression boots on, eating food, snapping my fingers you know, at my wife. Hey, can I get some more of this? Can I get some more of that? And I had YouTube on, watching races or whatever, because right? I was on the clock recovering. But now I actually have to use YouTube. It's like a great resource to like, learn stuff. Holy cow. I learned all kinds of stuff watching other people's videos, it, researching success stories, failure stories. I found a lot of direction on my own. And then I went out to people that I knew had, had made businesses, and they were successful. And I asked them questions all the time. In fact, I became friends with them. So I could always hang out with them. Hey, do you want to go get dinner tomorrow night? So I'm doing that. You know, like any time I had an opportunity to try to siphon off some knowledge from people, I took it because I needed that direction. And when your skills, ability, and direction that you started with finally meets what you needed for that desired outcome that you want in that transformation, you've done it. You become what you were trying to become, right? Like you've, you've, you've succeeded. And for me, that took three years. It took me three years to get from failed, broken, human being, crying, all screwed up, to driven, motivated, confident, in my mind, successful entrepreneur, business, and coach. There's no time limit, guys. And that's another thing that we all have to come to terms with. When things happen, when you have to change because things aren't working, you go in a different direction, the second you turn in that different direction, you're not going to see the results right away. When I turned and I started this journey, I was not looking for results. And this is a thing that I actually learned a lot from cycling, being a professional athlete, right? Like you're not looking for constant reinforcement. You make an objective, you make a mission, you buckle up, it's going to be a long journey to get there. But you never stop to smell the flowers along the way. You go until you've gotten there. So that's important for you guys to, to to listen to, right, and to understand. Just because you pivot, and you find clarity, and you start working on that, that action, and it doesn't turn out the way you expected right away, that doesn't mean stop. That means still keep going, right? Still push on. Still fight. Look at those skills, ability, and direction. Make sure that you're in line with that outcome, and you'll get there. But like I said, it's a long road, but it's so worth it. And I'm proud of who I am today, all my scars, all the things that I've overcome, all my imperfections. They've led me to become great at something different. And I feel good, and I feel confident, and I feel happy every single day of my life. And I hope you guys can all do the same as me and the, the key, point, key points in your life and when you have these challenges and recognize when it's time to transform and do it to the best of your ability. Thank you, guys.